Wow, uh, what an amazing and exciting day this has been. Um, I have been watching just with rapt attention since this morning, and I gotta tell you, I've, I've learned an awful lot. I thought I knew what we were doing here, and I definitely did at a surface level, but I learned so much more uh, about the, the insides and the inner workings of what we do today that I, I'm, I'm, I think I've got a lot of great material to make my blog post going forward even more detailed and hopefully even more interesting. Uh, before I jump in, I do want to thank uh, my colleagues Art and Martin for getting this all set up and for hosting all day. You did an amazing job. And someone that we don't always get to thank is our entire ASL team that's making all of our content more accessible to a, a wider audience. So thank you all for, for making that happen. So I, I learned a ton today. It, it, Reminded me of just all the amazing people that I get to work with. Reminded me of the fact that individuals make such a difference. And it's easy to think of the entire company or the team as just this entity and the entity does something. But you, you listen to these individual stories of each of my colleagues and how they personally took responsibility and ownership and, and did something to take their, their thought, their idea, their vision and to share it, to write it up, to push it forward. That, that really shows the, the, the value that individuals can have uh, around here. Uh, really thought I was drinking from the, the fire hose all day. And uh, this kind of a funny thought came to mind. So you, you might, if you follow me on Twitter, I, I like to make bread. I've got a couple different sourdough starters in my refrigerator and bread's awesome, love to make bread. But the, the reality is no matter how tasty that bread is, it's just kind of the the, the support or the container or the, the wrapper around what you actually want to get to, the actual, the actual center of that, that sandwich. And uh, sometimes when you're doing content creation, it feels like you got to have a, an awful lot of bread around a little tiny bit of content. Well, today, it, it felt like it was really all, all content. And we really, with, with all apologies to bread and the fact that bread can be really delicious, this was like almost no bread. It was, it was all content is kind of the way I, I really thought about it. Uh, it felt to me we went a lot deeper and shared a lot more details on the, the inner workings of different parts of AWS than ever before, which I, I really thought was, was super, super awesome. I thought I could just share just a, a few overview kind of thoughts and then maybe a little bit of a recap of some of the, the things I heard from each talk. I, I tried to take just a few notes and ended up with five pages, which I, I won't labor you with uh, all, all those details. But um, I, I heard a lot about security. And what I loved, what I heard was always, well, we start with security, we, we build it in. We don't create something and then say, well, how do we bolt on security after the fact? We, we start from ground zero of saying, we need to make security the, the first thing that we do here, which is, we, we've, we, I'm sure we've told you that before, but it's the absolute truth and that's the way we work, is we, we have to get that security engineered in from the very beginning. I heard about customers referenced in just so many different ways from the fact that we're we're building these different services and inventing instance types and inventing different parts of the Nitro system to satisfy the needs of not just this vague concept of, well, somewhere out there, there's some customers. We're inventing these to solve specific problems that are shared with us by very, very specific customers. And you also got to hear from a number of those different customers today, from Honeycomb and from, uh, from Splunk and from Aerostrike and, uh, and, and so forth. You certainly heard about innovation, the fact that we love to create, we love to innovate on behalf of our customers here. You, you saw how fast we like to do it. And something that struck me was the fact that this, this, um, the innovation and the speed are kind of tied in together. And we've created, if, if you've followed Amazon for a while, you know we've got this really cool concept called the, the virtuous cycle. And one of the things that we do here is as we create faster and faster instance types and make these instances run, run faster and do more, ever more cost effective, that itself is making us able to innovate faster and faster and faster. I, I think I must have heard that in, in different guises three, four, five different times today. Um, a lot about sustainability. I, I think that was mentioned in just about every talk. And this isn't just something that we're just trying to slip in on the side just to say, yeah, we're kind of, uh, we're talking the talk. This is something that is of great interest, great concern to us. And we're, we're trying to make sure that everything we do around here is as, is as sustainable as, as possible. It was really interesting to hear in one of the talks about uh, the fact that we're figuring out ways to make cement and to make steel with, with, with a, a greatly reduced carbon footprint, for, for example. So a quick recap of some of the, the a few highlights of each talk. And again, 
there was so little bread and it was all filling and, and such just nutrition here that it was, it's hard to just pick out the highlights because uh, my highlights are almost every bullet point and almost everything that the, the speaker said. But uh, hearing from Dave Brown and hearing about the different nitro building blocks and the, the networking and the virtualization and the security and the, the, the EBS and the encryption, really neat. Uh, you heard several times about the, the number of iterations we've done on the Graviton 3. It, it's hard to th believe that we launched that in 2018 and here we are in just mid-2022. We've, we've done three complete iterations on the, the Graviton architecture. That, that's pretty cool. With each one having more cores and incre increased price performance and able to take on even more workload. So re really great talk, uh, talk from Dave. I super enjoyed speaking with Anthony. I'm, I'm sure it came through that Anthony and I were just geeking out on all this really cool low-level hardware detail. I, I don't get to ever get my hands dirty with actual hardware, but it's, it's always fun to, to learn about it and to actually get to touch some just essential components of the, the Nitro system. And uh, as Anthony shared, they started with networking. He shared that first generation card, I think was somewhere over here. And we just, as we moved forward in time, we, we saw five, I think, different generations of the various uh, cards, the, the card that makes up the, the entire Nitro system, all that fits on, on a single card. And uh, as Anthony shared, these are building blocks, and with it, within that card, they can put them to use in a, in a whole lot of, of different ways. I, I love the fact that, as he told us, that Nitro card is the API endpoint within the data center. And then uh, when you make a call to EC2 run instances, either directly or through whatever intermediate layers you, you happen to use, whatever higher level components. Ultimately, you end up actually making an API, API call directly to that card, not to the, 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 um, the guest OS running on the, the attached CPU. You're, you're calling into that, that Nitro card. So, so whether you realize it or not, you are making calls directly to that, that Nitro, Nitro card. I thought, thought that was really cool. And the, the fact that, as he told us, the, the CPU is simply a peripheral. It, it has like, like each different part of the system. The CPU in a nitro powered system, it's just, it has one job to just go and fetch instructions out of memory, decode, execute, execute those instructions, put them back into to memory. So being able to treat that CPU as just one more peripheral, kind of a neat inversion of the way we generally think of, of the, the processor architecture working. And, and then ultimately how all of this nitro hardware works together to make the full CPU available to, to the customer. Oh, James, James, wow, what, what an amazing talk from James. I, I love to hear his, his first-hand recounting of all of this silicon innovation that we've been able to do. The story of how a, a casual, almost passerby conversation between James and Peter DeSantis led to the, the first iteration of the, the Nitro system. Super, super cool. And the, the fact that he took that thought a lot about it, and as we do here at Amazon, he wrote a doc to, to say, this is my, my vision for how we could get into the, the, the business of building customer hardware, and uh, less than a decade later, here we are with all the cool stuff that you have heard today. Uh, hearing from Nafa, always great. I've, I've met him a couple times, and he's, he's just a, a treasure trove of this really interesting geek level uh, information. Love to hear about how we talked about building a, a chip company, very specifically to build chips for the data center. At, at the time when they started doing that, data centers were pretty much com comprised of just generic hardware you'd buy off the shelf. And he and his, his co-founder looked at that and said, we can do something different, we can do something better, we can build a business to do that. And uh, that, that was clearly visionary, greatly insightful, and uh, look where they've been able to take that from there. Pretty amazing that Nafa and his team were able to get the, the first iteration of their, their chip from, from idea to finished running silicon in, in two years, which is a long time on a calendar, but very, very short by semiconductor time frames. And uh, again, he mentioned the Amazon flywheel, the customers, the workloads, and then uh, the improvements in the hardware that then feed into the customers, make the customers run better, faster, cheaper, and enable more workloads. And, and around and around it goes. Wonderful talk from Amit about sustainability, uh, hearing about the climate pledge, hearing about 300 different sustainability projects and renewable energy projects we have underway, uh, the customer carbon footprint tool, helping you to understand your, your emissions, helping you to reduce those and to make better decisions about your, your systems and your architectures and, and the like. Uh, quick break, we heard from, from JD about uh, 
about security. Again, as, as I said earlier, security is just so central and fundamental to everything we, we do here. And uh, as he put it, he said, security permeates every engineering process here at, at AWS. And it's always top of mind. And I think he said it, it's everywhere you look and it's in every nook and cranny. So I, I don't know how we can make a, a stronger statement than that about just how central and important and fundamental security is to, to what we do here. Uh, line rate encryption of network traffic. How, how cool is that? The fact that the, we, we don't have to copy in all this network traffic to a, a buffer, put it in memory, run encryption on it, copy it back out. We're able to stream the encryption and the decryption for, for incredible efficiency. Let's see, confidential computing, the, the whole enclave model, I've written about that a couple times, kind of right on the edge of my understanding, but nothing wrong with that, and something I think that a lot of our customers grasp and can appreciate a little bit better than, than I do. Let's see, what else do we have here? Oh, let's see, we, we heard about the Nitro SSD, the fact that it offers much lower latency than the, the older HDD hard, hard disk drives, and the fact that it's built of very dense flash memory, certainly interesting, but the, the, the neat thing, and, and again, sometimes this stuff is kind of, it just happens behind the scenes, you don't know about it, but the fact that when you're using flash memory, when you're building, using the flash memory to build SSD, well, you have to do this thing called load leveling to make sure that you don't prematurely wear out one part of the flash while other parts of it have never been touched and have a lot more, um, a lot more cycles left in them. So being able to engineer that into the, into the SSD and also at the same time, that same kind of engineering let us have a, a much, much more predictable, always low latency on the, those SSDs. Let's see, from, from there we heard a lot about Graviton at, Hard to overstate how many times we heard about Graviton today, right? We, we heard about the fact that there, we've, we've done three generations in four years. We've done 13 different instance types that, that are now offering you better price performance than the comparable x86 instance types. We're hearing great news from our customers about uh, how easy it is for them to, to migrate, sometimes just recompiling and, and, and tuning and, uh, and away they go. We heard a lot about machine learning. I learned about this new phrase that uh, I, I'm, I'm definitely not a, a math whiz and I heard this phrase stochastic rounding and with, with reading a slide, I actually had a, a little bit of understanding of what, what that's uh, all about. But hearing about how our Trainium is designed to do very efficient scale out training, that, that was to me really interesting, really enlightening. And uh, then, I, then I heard about this idea that we can take 10,000 of these Traniums, create a, a monster we call an, an ultra cluster and do incredibly large scale training exercises with a, with a cluster of 10,000 traniums. And I, I don't remember the exact number, I think it was 1.6 petabytes of, uh, of bandwidth between those. So some, some ridiculously amaz amazing number. And let's see, we heard about the use of AWS for electronic design automation. Again, a, a really cool way to, to spin that flywheel even faster. I, I got on a little bit of a divergence there. Um, Dave and Ahmed mentioned this phrase called computational lithography, which I'd never heard that before. And it, it sounded really, really cool. And I, I should have actually been listening fully to Dave and Ahmed, but I, I unfortunately did a quick search for computational lithography. And before I knew it, I was deeply immersed in reading how, how interesting and how cool uh, that's all about. But uh, please feel free to go ahead and, and do that same search if you'd like. And we, we wrapped up with, with Roshni. We heard about how you can modernize your apps. Um, you might be going from going to container apps or to serverless apps, or, or she mentioned hybrid apps as, as well. The, the fact that what, what she does is all about focusing on customers, helping customers to, to improve and optimize and, and succeed. And it turns out that once again, Nitro and Graviton are a, a really big part of that, all the, the efficiency, uh, always helping the customer to get the, be the best possible price performance. Uh, certainly, she mentioned uh, the, the better crypto, the floating point, and the machine learning performance that the Graviton 3 offers. Uh, talked a little bit about managed services, but uh, wrapped, wrapped up with talking about things like uh, using savings plans and compute optimizers to, to save money and to figure out more ways you can save money. That is my very, very quick 50,000 foot summary of a, an incredibly busy, interesting, and to me just eye-opening day. I thought I knew what was going on around here, and I did at this kind of fuzzy surface level, but after watching all this content today, I'm like, wow, this is just an, an amazing amount of, uh, of, of great 
great work going on here that I, I wasn't even fully aware of, to, to be totally, totally open and, and honest with you here. And uh, that's just about all I've got for you today. Again, uh, thanks to everybody, all my colleagues who got this all set up and, and going. Really appreciate our, our team, appreciate the fact that we've got this amazing ASL team helping to make all of this uh, more open and accessible to you. Hope you found that valuable as well. Um, thanks again for watching, and uh, that's all I've got for now. I'm Jeff Barr. We'll see you again sometime soon. Here we go.